Hi, welcome to ACCQ Continuing Professional Education. This time, we're going to talk about one of the most interesting subjects, or one of the most significant subjects na lahat tayo naapektuhan, income taxation. Don't panic. There's no need to panic. You just have to learn about income taxation. So stay calm and watch this video. Stay tuned. So as we said a while ago, we're going to talk about income taxation, particularly domestic and foreign corporations. So kasi ito yung pinaka uh, malaganap na mga businesses dito sa Philippines, no? particularly itong mga corporations na to, domestic and uh, for resident foreign corporations. So we will go into each of them. No? Papakita muna natin yung mga, yung mga description as well as yung tax rate at saka yung sa, saan nakabase yung kanilang tax, no? whether it's uh, taxable income or the gross. Okay, so let's begin with domestic corporations. So as we can see here, in general, there are three types of uh, taxation for the domestic corporation. So the, yung una, yung corporate income tax, which is, well, as uh, we know, 30%, no? Okay, but because of the, ito yung sa train law, but because of the, itong sa, sa create law, so from 30%, naging 25%. Now, of course, there is a qualification there. So, looking here, dito sa qualification ito, as we can see here, so, basahin muna natin itong, ano, itong, 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 itong narrative dito. No? So, on recent March 26, 2021, the president signed into law Republic Act Number 11534, or the Create Act, which is the reconciled version of the bicameral conference committee itself, the disagreement provisions of House Bill Number 4157 and Senate Bill Number 1357. Alam niyo ito kasing itong tax law, it is, it is a legislative in nature, so yung mga senador saka yung mga congressman ng ang uh, ang gumagawa nito no so but the president is the one signing this into a law that uh, so, amends republic act number 8424 or the national Inter internal revenue code of 1997 as amended with the following salient provisions sinabi rito reduce corporate income tax the create act lowers the corporate income tax rate from 30% to 25% beginning 1st of July 2020, where the corporation's net income does not exceed. Ito, panibagong statement to. Where the corporation's net income does not exceed 5 million pesos and its total assets do not exceed 100 million pesos, excluding land where the business is situated. So, yung tax rate raw is 20%. So, mostly ito sa mga, sasabi natin, small and medium enterprise, no? Okay, 25%. Baaring ito yung sa mga malalaking enterprise, no? Okay, yung, yung, uh, yung mga large corporations. Okay, as we can see here, for non-resident foreign corporations, the tax shall be 25%. So, 25% yan para sa mga non-resident or non-resident foreign corporations. Ayan. Okay. So, as we go here again, okay. so, as, so as we can see here, Dito, makikita natin dito, 25% doon sa 25% doon sa create law and 20% 20 if the net income does not exceed 5 million. Okay? And, and tax base niya is 
taxable income from all sources within and without the Philippines. So kahit yung mga yung mga income niya from abroad, no, kasama pa rin yun, no? Not only in the Philippines. And then next, ito yung minimum corporate income tax. So yung dati yung rate was 2%, no? But because of the uh, CREATE law, it was reduced to 1%. So again, if we if we look at the uh, the this uh, this news, okay, on create law, it says here that the minimum corporate income tax or MCIT shall be imposed at the rate of one percent, which is was previously two percent beginning first of July 2020, until June 2023 for next uh, two years, actually. Alas two years pa, no? Okay, so gagamitin natin yun, yung 1%, no? Okay, para rin ano yun eh, kumbaga parang to re- para rin makarecover yung mga corporations, especially yung mga malilit na corporations, no? Okay, now as we can see here, yung sa tax base is the uh, gross income. So ganun pa rin yun, no? Whether it was the 2% or the 1%, ganun pa rin, gross income pa rin. Now let's proceed yung isa pang tax type which is improperly accumulated earnings. So ito for the time being it is repealed but, but it was 10% no so repealed mo repealed muna siya. This wala pang announcement no so hindi mo siya i-impose in other words. And tax base niya is the improperly accumulated taxable income. Now yung sa ano naman proprietary educational institution kuno naman mga schools no ang kanyang tax rate uh, before the the create law and under the the um, the yung uh, train law it was 10% as we can see here no okay mababa ito dun sa regular corporate income tax rate na 30% dati no nung train law pa lang na wala pang create law so ngayon from 10% ang laki ng binaba so ginawang 1% na lang kasi for obvious reasons no Okay, we're doing a lot of this uh, online classes and maraming mga yung uh, first yung bi- yung school buildings ay eh, nakatenga ngayon no kasi because wala klase. Okay? So kita ka nga diyan sa recto, it's like a ghost town. Halos wala wala ng ano, wala uh, wala mga uh, wala mga estudyante na normally nakikita natin no. Okay, because of the online learning. Uh, so with that Binaban lang yung tax to 1%, no? Okay? And then, uh, yung tax base, still taxable income from all sources. So, so, similar to the corporate income tax in general. Okay, now, as we can see here, yung next is yung non-profit hospital. So, this is also a domestic corporation, no? So, but it is a non-stop, non-profit hospital, which has a, a tax rate. Corporate tax rate of 10%. This is under train law. Just similar to proprietary education institution. But since there is a, uh, of course, yung mga, uh, kumbaga, consideration for this, uh, no, yung mga so hospitals, no, na, lalo na ngayon, eh, busy-busy ang ating mga hospitals ngayon, no, yung mga frontliners. So, um, kaya, you know, to ease the burden, so instead of 10%, ginawa lang 1%, no? Okay, similar to the education, Okay institution. And of course the uh, the tax base ito kung, kung saan nagbabase yung tax taxable income from all sources. So pag sinabing taxable income, ito lang yung yung uh, yung yung prof yung ano yung revenue na pumasok sa company less yung lahat ng expenses, yung uh, direct cost of sales and yung operating expenses. So makikita mo kuha natin yung net income or in tax terminology taxable income so ito yung magiging basihan nung rate na yon okay now let's take an example here as we can see here a uh, an example of uh, a school gen z university a proprietary educational institution has a gross income for the taxable year 2021 of 15 million pesos of the gross income of the gross income, 5 million was derived from under trade or business. Ayan. So, 
So total deduction amounted to 3 million. So ang uh, ang pinaka scenario nito, itong uh, eskwela na to ay uh, ay si ano si Gen Z, no? Okay? So 15 million ang kinita niya, yung yung pinaka gross income niya na gross na ito, no? Okay, now. Uh, we will now proceed to the solution. So yung gross income was 15 million. Tapos ililist natin dito yung deduction. Magkano yung deduction? 3 million. Ayun, nakalagay dito, no? 3 million. So we will deduct this 3 million from the gross income. So we will have 12 million. So this is the net income or the taxable income. By the way, yung gross income, no? ito yung salesless cost of sales na to, no? Kaya gross income. So diretsa tayo sa gross income, no? Okay. So etong net income, okay. Now, would be multiplied by the tax rate. So under the CREATE Act, this will be only 1%, no? Instead of 10%. So malaking bagay yun sa mga uh, schools, and pro yung mga proprietary schools. So 12 million times 1% would be would give you 120,000 which was the tax due. So laki bagay noon kasi imagine if that is uh, 10% that would be 1.2 million. O oh, laking bawas din sa tax nila no? O oh, sabi ko, you know, uh, meron naman mga ganyang ano yung create loan na somehow it with the uh, is the burden of this uh, yung mga um, corporations no, in this time of pandemic no. Okay now uh, kung titignan natin, no? okay, let's change the scenario. Sinabi rito, meron raw uh, 5 million unrelated uh, trade, unre un unrelated income from trade, other trade or business, other than yung school operations. Kung baga, para silang meron pang iba pang source ng pinagkakakitaan, maliban pa dun sa 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 pang tuition, yung mga tuition, yung mga school operation, no? Okay. Now, pagka ganyan po, pagka more than 50% yung ano, yung uh, yung kinikita nila outside of the school operations, no? Pupunta po tayo dun sa regular income tax rate, which was before under trade law. Pagka ganyan, ano, pagka ganyan yung, uh, yung uh, income from unrelated sources, uh, let's say dun sa ano, bukod pa dun sa, sa school operations, mga tuition ng mga bata, no? Okay, meron pa silang ibang income na pinagkakakitaan. Let's say, uh, um, let's say, you know, iba pang income, no? Okay, let's say may, <laughs> may saklaan dun, no? Pagka, with regard dito sa ano sa sa unrelated trade or business as you can see here meron sila dito yung 5 million was derived from unrelated trade or sources ang ibig sabihin lang dito pag yang unrelated trade and uh, business na yan ang ibig sabihin is meron silang pinagkakakitaan pa bukod pa dun sa school operations no okay now pagka ganun pagka more than 50% yung kanilang uh, unrelated trade no o for example no Okay, if it's more than 50%, then yung uh, magiging rate nila, they will go back dun sa normal corporate income tax rate of uh, 30%, which is under trained law. Pero of course, if it's under the, you know, yung, uh, yung create act, no? So they will be taxed at 25%, no? Considering yung kanilang net income is more than 5 million, okay? 25%. So tatratuhin sila na parang normal corporate income tax. Pag mas malaki pa yung kinikita nila, no? Doon sa labas outside of school operations kaysa doon sa mga school operations like tuition, mga ganon. So, having said that, let's pick up an example here. What if Genesis of university gross income derived from unrelated business is 9 million? So, obviously, that is more than the uh, half of the uh, the, the school's income no, of 15 million kasi 9 over 5, that's more than 15%. No? So this is 9 divided by 15, that would be... Ah, hindi sumusulat. Eh, yan, yan, yan. So lagay natin dito, 9 divided by 15, that is about 60%. 
no ano so that is over 40% no so therefore magaano sila mag uh, magbabayad sila based on dun sa ano nila dun sa um based dun sa kanil, based dun sa corporate normal corporate tax rate which is under the create up 25% so kunin muna natin no so gross income would be yan so 15 million okay now we will deduct these deductions no okay so for 3 million so again it's like the uh yung unang computation no computation that's 12 million okay so this is the net income now yung out of this row 15 million 9 million raw nakuha raw yan sa outside of school operations kasi nga naman no may pandemic di masyadong uh, ikaw nga may apektado yung enroll, enrollment so maaring meron na silang pinagkakakitaan labas pa dun sa school operations so yun na nga 9 million out of that uh, 15 million so that's 60% so therefore they will be taxed no yung uh, tax rate of 25% okay because over 5 million yan no okay so magkano po ito this would be 3 million and okay so you see the difference no okay so under the uh, yung sa school operation 20% tapos yung corporate no yung uh, normal corporate tax rate uh, which is under the create up of 25% no so malaking diferensya yon now you see, it pays to know kung may alam ka sa tax. No? Okay, now, let's proceed now dun sa foreign corporation, sa resident foreign. Sa resident foreign corporation, similar rin yan sa domestic corporation. So, in general, meron tayong corporate tax na 30%. Katulad rin yung sa uh, domestic corporation. No? Pag sinabing do, uh, resident corporation, by the way, ito yung mga, yung mga corporation na na kumbaga na, nandito na sa Pilipinas no okay yung uh, yung bang uh, they stayed here for kumbaga for years na no okay so kaya resident na sila rito sa Philippines no there are a lot of uh, resident foreign corporations so who do business here in the Philippines no okay so in general itong mga resident foreign corporation they will be taxed at 30%. The same rin ng mga, no? the same rin ng, uh, ng uh, domestic corporation. But because under the CREATE law, okay, or the CREATE Act, no, so 25% lang. Now, pagka not exceeding 5 million, they will only be taxed for 20%. Okay? Now, pansinin mo to, yung kanilang taxable income is only from the Philippines. Okay? Hindi ka tulad ng ng, uh, ng yung tax base ng uh, corporate income tax ng domestic corporation taxable income from different sources. So halimbawa, Jollibee, domestic corporation, meron siyang income doon sa ano, meron siyang income sa Dubai because of its operations, US and all these uh, uh, countries outside. Kasama pa rin 'yon. This uh, these are all part of the corporate uh, income tax of Jollibee, no? Whether within or without the Philippines, within or outside of the Philippines. Pero dito naman sa ano, sa sa foreign corporation, no? Okay. So yung kanilang uh, taxable income limitado lang dito sa Philippines. So kung meron silang pinagkakakitaan abroad, well hindi nakasama yon, okay? Yan. So yun yung kanilang taxable income. Dito pagbabasihan yung rate na ito, okay? Now, aside from corporate income tax, ano pa yung kanilang ano, tax type? Yung minimum corporate income tax. So, meron silang 2% under the train law, but because of the, you know, yung sa create law, 1% na lang. So, gross in of the gross incomes, similar rin dito sa domestic, no? Kaya lang, yung, ano na yan, yung gross income na yan, only in the Philippines, no? Philippine income lang yan. Okay, and then yung improperly accumulated earnings, so this is a repeat, no? For the time being. Tapos, ito naman, itong next is yung international carriers. Ito yung mga, yung mga barko. No? Okay, so, 2.5% of the gross Philippine billings. So, ito yung mga foreign corporations. No? Okay, resident foreign corporations. Tapos, yung regional operating headquarters. No? Yung kanilang, uh, yung kanilang uh, 
tax rate is 10% of the taxable income. Now, tignan nga natin kung ano yung regional um, foreign, no? Okay? So, itong regional foreign, okay, so, uh, these are, shall be subject to the regular corporate tax beginning January 1, 2022. So, next year, balik na naman. Doon na sila sa 10% ulit, no? Okay. Itong regional operating Ang pag sinabing regional ay operating headquarters, ito yung mga multinational, no? Na nag nag, uh, nag uh, who's doing business here in the Philippines, no? Meron si marami mga multinational companies na who do business here in the Philippines. So 10% yung kanilang tax base doon sa uh, taxable income, no? Okay, so within the Philippines lang 'yan. Kaya dito, no? Okay, and then the next is yung offshore banking units. Okay, of B OBUs. So, 10% rin niya, no? So, ito yung mga offshore, ito yung, kumbaga, yung mga foreign currency transaction, no? Um, uh, with the, with, uh, yung, yun yung, ano niya, yung pinaka-nature ng operations niya. So, offshore sila, ibig sabihin, may branch lang sila dito sa Philippines, no? Pero offshore sila. So, 10% of that would be tax, no? Okay, pagka nakipag-transact uh, sila dito sa mga, let's say, sa mga locals, no? Okay, yung foreign currency transaction, no? Okay. Uh, denominated by, of course, foreign currency. So that is 10% of the gross taxable income. So pag sinabing gross, yung kalahatan na, yung gross income nila, no? Yung, yung TD pa nila. Okay, and then the last one is yung profit remittance by a resident corporation which they are taxed at 15%. Dun din sa total profits applied for remittance. So let's take up an example here. Okay, so a foreign corporation authorized to do business in the Philippines by Philippine regulatory agencies. So had the following data from operations in 2021. So as we can see here, ayan, so gross income Philippines is 30 million pesos. Gross income foreign 90 million, no? Okay, so like we said, hindi kasali yung income abroad, no? So, pagka resident foreign, dun lang siya limitado dun sa income niya within the Philippines, no? Okay. Uh, business expenses Philippines, 10 million. And business expenses foreign, that's 14 million. Okay? So, hindi, ang gagamitin lang natin yung Philippine expenses lang. Okay. Now, out of the uh, Philippine income, there was an actual remittance abroad of 8.5 million. So, dun raw galing sa income ng Pilipinas, may nirimit na 8.5 million million. Okay, so may tax rin niya, no? Bukod pa dun sa corporate tax. So, let's compute for the income tax due from operation. So, the solution here, okay, okay, gross, gross income within the Philippines, that's 30 million pesos. Okay? Now, ililess natin only by the business expenses from the Philippines for 10 million pesos. Okay, so the uh, difference is 20 million. What do you call that? This is the net income or the net taxable income Philippines. Now, they will be taxed only in the Philippines. So take note, yung income nila foreign, hindi na sinali. Saka itong 40 million. Okay? Now, so magkano yung kanilang income tax? That would be 25% under the CREATE Act. So that would be 5 million. Okay? Now, yung next naman, yung profit remittance tax paid no so they uh, kasi yung dun sa income nila na 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 20 million ay eh, inano nila ni-remit nila yung 8.5 million abroad so meron rin yang tax okay so the profit remittance kasi lumabas sa pansa eh no okay so um 8.5. So alam mo naman, syempre, para naman, ano, ma, ma, dito sila nag-ninegosyo, uh, mabigyan naman yung mga ano rito, no, kumbaga parang may beneficio rin naman yung mga uh, Pilipino rito, no, kahit pa paano, no, uh, by, that, by, by the tax that they pay, no. Okay, so 8.5 million, now that is 8.5 million, i-divide natin yan by 85%, no. Okay, so, yan, so para makuha yung gross o yung total profit remittance, no? Okay. Now, saka pa lang natin i-compute yung profit remittance. So, 10 million times 15%. So, yung basihan pala niyan, yung total profit remittance. 
okay, na 10 million, hindi yung 8.5 million. Kasi 8.5 million, that is only assumed to be yung remittance na yun, no? Na, ano na yun, kumbaga, net of tax na yun. Okay? Yun yung remit. Kumbaga, labas na yun. Doon na sa, ano yun, sa mga uh, kababayan nila doon sa abroad, no? So, i-divide natin sa 10 mil, sa 8, 8, 85% para makuha yung 100%, which is 10 million, doon tayo magbabase ng 15%. Okay? So, ang tax na babayaran nila sa sa, sa BIR is 1.5 million pesos. Okay? So, we'll now proceed now dun sa, ano, dun sa passive income. So, incidentally, if you have any questions here, you may want to just comment, no? Okay? Uh, now, let's proceed now dito sa passive income. Now, itong passive income, no? on both domestic and resident foreign corporation. So, uh, na-discuss na rin natin yan before um, dun sa previous na video on on corporate tax. So, we want, if you want to check that out, there's there, there's a video here. So, recently, no? Okay, so just check it out. Now, eto, yung passive income, interest from deposit and yield or any other monetary Benefit substitutes and from trust funds and similar arrangements. So, 20% yun. Yung kanyang uh, passive income. Ano, kaya pag nakikita mo yung passbook mo, no? yung passbook ng domestic corporation, meron na siyang, ano, dun sa, dun sa kinita niyang interest, makakaltasan pa siya <coughs> ng 20% na final tax. Okay, so ganun din sa resident foreign, 20% rin yung final tax niya ron. Okay, now yung interest income from depository bank, under the expanded foreign currency deposit system, 7.5% for each of them, no? Okay, yung mga, yung mga, yung mga nakipag-transact rin ng foreign currency, no? Dito sa mga, um, mga, ano na to, no? Mga foreign banks, no? Okay, yung interest income loan na kinu, na, 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 na kuha dyan, it will be taxed at 7.5%. Okay, foreign currency yon, no? Okay, now royalties in general, that's 20% for domestic and 20% for resident. Meantime, dito naman sa dividends received by a domestic as well as resident foreign corporation from a domestic corporation, exempted yan. No? So kahit na, let's say, domestic corporation nakatanggap ng dividends from another domestic corporation, exempted yan. Ganun din sa foreign corporation, resident foreign corporation nakareceive ng dividends from a domestic corporation exempted by it. Okay? So, if you have any questions uh, regard, with regard to this uh, topic on uh, uh, corporations, no? kahit na maulan no? sa labas, no? okay. so you just comment uh, whatever questions you have. Of course, God bless. Stay safe. And subscribe and share this video and like. Okay? Stay safe and see you.